Hello Six Nation. Today I'm going to take you through a day in the life of a doctor. I'm working full day today. Morning session is clinic and then afternoon I've got SDL which is self-directed learning. If you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Dr. Owen. I'm a GP registrar. My mission is to help doctors lead a happy and sexual life. Every Thursday, I publish new video covering the subject of GP training, well-being and high performance. I work as a generalist medical practitioner in the UK. GPs provide primary care services to the population. The service is free at the point of care. Primary care services provide the first point of contact in the UK healthcare system. Some people may say we are the front door of the NHS. On a typical day, I consult 20 to 25 patients in my clinic, 12 in the morning and 12 in the afternoon, including home visits. My commute to work is approximately 25 minutes. I usually listen to a podcast on my way to work. In my opinion, it makes the commute more interesting. If I'm feeling reflective, I drive with no audio on. Having quiet time is something I do appreciate now and again. Today I'm listening to a podcast. It's 8.30, I've just arrived at my practice. Once I get into the consulting room, I switch on the PC and log on the IT system. At my current practice, we use Ask My GP, which is an online consultation and workflow system. Patients send requests to their GPs on the system. The request can then be prioritized and dealt through message, phone, video or face-to-face. -face. I consult mostly over telephone and face-to-face. -face. We see a mix of acute and chronic cases in primary care. The beauty of general practice is the variety of cases. Today I consulted patients with headache, amenorrhea, bedwetting, polymyalgia rheumatica, tennis elbow and sinusitis. If you're a healthcare professional, you might have heard of this mantra. If it wasn't documented, it didn't happen. If you're not familiar with this mantra, it means if there isn't an entry of the care delivered in the patient's medical record, by way of documentation, the activity was not done. I spent a large chunk of time documenting consultation in each patient's medical record. Today I referred a patient to the gynecology department. I dictate a referral letter that goes to the secretary for typing. If it is an admission to hospital, I usually handwrite my letter. Doctors are notoriously known to have awful handwritings. I do my best to ensure the letter is legible. It's 12.35, I'm just about to go on a house call to see a patient. The frequency of home visits varies according to the demographic of the population registered to the practice. Home visits are offered to patients who cannot come down for an appointment. Today an elderly woman with joint aches requested a home visit. I usually phone the patient beforehand so the latter expects when I'm coming to visit. If you want to know what I carry in my bag, I've made a video on the essential equipment. Due to the risks with the pandemic, I also carry personal protective equipment when I go out for a house call. It's nearly one o'clock, so I've just finished my house call and I'm going to go back towards the surgery now. I'm back in the surgery. I've just done some paperwork, signing some prescriptions and reviewing some blood tests. I usually sign my repeat prescriptions at the end of morning clinic. There's usually a pile of repeat prescriptions in a folder that one of the receptionists bring for me to sign. Signing repeat prescription is an admin task that GPs do every day. A GP can easily sign hundreds of repeat prescriptions per day. I also get results of investigations I previously requested. This involved blood results, x-ray reports, and microbiology reports. Reviewing blood results is a chance to follow up on tests I requested for patients. When results come back abnormal, we may reconsult patients and decide on further actions. Besides seeing patients in clinic, I also receive discharge summaries and clinic letters from the hospital. Reviewing these documents is important to ensure continuity of care from secondary care to primary care. So I'm just going to have some lunch now. So I've got some sandwich which I've heated. Um, I'm just going to have that and then after that I've got my self-directed learning session. In the afternoon, I have an educational session. This one is a self-directed learning session, so known as SDL. I use a time to review the RCA cases that I'm preparing for. The RCA is a new assessment that replaces the CSA examination. 
The LCA is a recorded consultation assessment. What it involves is to record live consultation with patient's consent. And the consultation needs to be within 10 minutes. Each consultation is assessed with respect to three domains, data gathering, clinical management, and interpersonal skills. Candidates can submit various modes of consultation. It can be telephone consultation, a video consultation, or face-to-face -face consultation. As part of my SDL, I check with my supervisor whether she's got some free time so that we can go through a few cases and get some feedback from her. Being a generalist medical practitioner is challenging due to the enormous pressure on primary care. However, it is a rewarding career. As a family doctor, you have continuity of care, you develop relationship with your patient, and you can support them and make a real difference in their life. And you see these changes because you see the patient from when they're sick, when they come to you, and if you have to admit them to hospital, and then when they come back to you. So it is this continuity of care and the cycle of life that you see as a family doctor. As the saying goes, variety is a spice of life. In general practice, we see so many variety of cases, and you won't get bored as a journalist because there are so many things that you will see. And there's a diagnostic challenge in general practice because you don't have test results straight away as you would in hospital. For example, if I'm requesting a blood investigation or x-ray, I don't get the results straight away. It usually takes a couple of days sometimes for x-rays. It may take a few weeks. I usually finish around 5 o'clock or sometimes half 5 p.m. If I'm on evening duty, then I may finish later around half 6. On my way back home, I usually listen to music while driving to unwind after a day in GP land. If I still got some energy and it's not too late, then I go for a post-work run to get some fresh air. Thank you for joining me through a day in the life of a doctor and making it through to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or any suggestions, please let me know down in the comment sections. If you've not already subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. Take care everybody. Bye-bye. If you're considering joining general practice, I've made a video on the benefits of GP training. Click the video on the right to learn more about the benefits of GP training, we go over seven benefits.